Hey DIYers, welcome back to this fifth and final episode on the new home build. And if you've missed any of the first four episodes, don't worry, I'll have a link down below or a playlist link at the end of this video and go back and watch. Now we will have covered a lot in these five videos. We started with the first episode that talked about the pre-planning, how to find a contractor, all the way up to the last episode where we talked about plumbing, electrical, and insulation. So with this fifth episode, we're gonna start with sheetrock and finish it out. So typically what you're gonna have on all your interior walls is gonna be half inch sheetrock. And in between like your garage and the interior living quarters, it should be a 5 8 fire rock. And that's pretty much code. And you can see in this house they've started, they've got the first coat of their drywall mud on, the seams and the nail heads and that sort of stuff. And now as far as finish on your walls, do you want them smooth or do you want them textured? Personal preference. Yeah, it'll cost a little more for textured. I personally like textured, or maybe you just like them smooth, it's easy to paint, not to worry with. Now I've looked around this house really closely and they're all really good. I don't see any bowed out walls. Now I have seen in some of these where the wall is pretty bowed out. It tends to be an exterior type wall and I know what it is. It's the plumbing that come up through there. It's a three inch pipe and a three and a half inch wall and they're off just a little bit and they're having to go around it. Do everything you can to avoid that in the pre-planning stage and be sure to have two to six walls for your three inch pipe or two to four walls for anything that's two inches or smaller so that you don't have these bowing problems. The other thing is, is the bathroom. Now surprisingly and nice in these bathrooms, they've got this Dura Rock, which is kind of like a cement board type material. It doesn't rot when it gets wet, whereas your sheetrock does. I would prefer Dura Rock. I really don't care for that styrofoam Schluter stuff, but you definitely don't want just the blue or the purple sheetrock that's supposed to be mold resistant because that stuff gets wet, it'll rot too. Now it's my understanding that you're supposed to tape over and mud over these seams, not with drywall mud, but with a Dura Rock type cement mud. Whether they're gonna do it later or not, don't know. Ask for this. You don't want sheetrock in your showers or your tubs. Now, let's talk about your corner beads. These are metal square corner beads. Maybe you like square corners. I actually like the rounded one. Rounded ones can add a little bit to the cost, but I do like the rounded corner bead versus these square ones. Personally, for me, the rounded ones are gonna be less likely to get damaged and dinged, whereas these square ones are. And typically when they do your sheetrock, they usually put the ceiling in first, like they've done here, and then your walls come in after that. Like these are done with screws. Typically it's done with screws, but some people actually do, like there is some nails in it. They'll hang, get it partially hung with some nails and then have somebody come back around behind them and put all the screws in. And how they put the screws is determined too by code. And then when it comes to paint, well, that's up to you. Now I'm sure these houses here are all gonna get painted white. They're not gonna do any kind of accent colors and finish it however you want once you move in. But if you're getting a semi-custom home, you can pick what colors you want to wear and what finishes do you want them. Glossy, semi-gloss, satin, flat. Now typically on your ceilings, I know they do flat, but the other thing you really want when it comes to your paint is a good quality paint. A good quality paint is gonna be a little more expensive versus that watery stuff that you can get at the home centers. So make sure you inquire as to what kind of paint you're gonna use and how good a quality it might be. Now in this house here, they did texture the walls and there's a jillion different types of textures, knocked down, just hundreds of different kinds of texture. And honestly, it's just on your preference, what you want. Now there is one thing I will say about texture and that is, if you don't want it on something, make sure they or you tape off so they don't. Now they taped off for this window, but they didn't do a very good job because there's still a bunch on the frame itself. And as you can see in here, they definitely didn't cover this door rock because it's got texture all over it. And they didn't cover this shower pan at all because there's mud in it and texture. Now, if I was the guy doing the tiling, this is the last thing I'd want is this stuff on my door rock. Either A, when you go to put on your tile, you're gonna to have to build it out so it's not all wonky, or B, if you don't, you're gonna have lippage. In fact, they didn't even get this down very good. They're gonna have a big, huge lip right there to contend with, because they're not gonna come through here and pre-float these walls. I guarantee you that. I know they're not doing that. So if you don't want texture on stuff, have them tape it off, require it's taped off. I mean, it's all over the pecs, the plumbing, everything. Basically, the only thing they kind of taped off is the windows. And one other thing as far as your interior walls go would be your window seals. Now these here happen to be made out of wood. You can get stone, you can get MDF, you can get all kinds of stuff. And again, it's kind of personal preference. Personally, I think I'm gonna replace all mine with some sort of stone. I just think it looks nicer, but it's your preference. And the other thing will be your baseboard. Now this is pretty cheap looking baseboard. It looks like actually 
door molding is what it looks like to me. But again, there's many, many different styles, baseboard trim, door trim, window trim. And again, the more fancy, the more the cost. Personally, I would like a little wider one. And this one's okay as far as thickness, but I've seen some that are about half that thick. And one other thing I want to talk about when it comes to like baseboard trim, like these guys here, they left no gapping whatsoever. What gap you see is by mistake, I guarantee you but they left no gapping for tile, carpet, any kind of flooring to go under. So either A, say this is getting tile, which I don't think it is because some of the other houses got this roll out linoleum looking stuff. They're just gonna butt it right up to it and either A, caulk it to hide it, or B, put a cord around on there to hide it. If you've got tile, your tile's gonna set up a good half inch with the mortar and everything. Baseboard isn't very thick to begin with, so you're gonna lose a half inch and then your quarter round. That's gonna look god awful here. And carpet, are they just gonna tuck it to the edge? Again, your carpet's gonna stick up a good half inch to an inch and hide half your baseboard. So if you want flooring, make sure either A, they don't put your baseboards down till your flooring's in, or B, they account for a gap for your flooring to go in under there. Personally, I'd say don't have it in until your flooring's in unless it's carpet, then you can put this in and that way they can tuck the carpet under there, look neat and be painted and everything's done. The other thing is, is this big old crack right here. They're gonna make that look good with caulking. So that's why you want straight walls. If nothing else, they should have come along here, pushed this against the wall and nailed it so it was tight. Next, let's talk cabinetry. Now here's where it can get real expensive real quick. Door-bought cheapies all the way to fully custom. Now, these actually aren't too bad, and I'll get you a close-up. These actually are plywood boxes. You do not, do not, do not want that cheap old, like, Ikea particle board or MDF boxes that have, and typically what you can get is you can get an MDF or a particle board box, and the front will be a hardwood. You don't want that. You want an all-plywood box. Now, I'm actually shocked that that's what's in this house, but the only thing I would say is these are half inch. I would want to get a little beefier in a three quarter inch box. But this actually isn't too bad. I'm really shocked that they went with plywood. And as far as drawers go, I mean, these kind of got cheap old slides on them. They're not, you know, they're not soft clothes. They're just kind of some run of the mill cheap slides. I don't know what they're gonna do for pulls. Again, door pulls can get real expensive real quick. They may not put anything and just let you do your own. But these cabinets here, pretty much the same thing in the bathroom. They all kind of match in the color and everything. Now I will say the drawers in these are pretty cheap. It's an MDF type stuff that's got a laminate on it. I'd want a hardwood drawer. Gonna cost a little more, but these, these won't hold up. Now countertops. There's a whole array of ways you can go here. This is granite, you can go marble if you want, you could go butcher block wood, stone. I mean, there's endless possibilities. But anyhow, they've got granite. I like granite, it's nice. Colors, designs, again, all up in the air. You can get all kinds of stuff. When it comes to backsplashes, same thing. You can do like they did here, is use some of the granite, tile, stone, whatever you want. Endless choices. Bathrooms, same thing. You know, these have the sinks already built into the countertop. Actually, it's kind of nice. Don't have to worry about it. You can get top mount sinks, bottom mount, whatever you want. This came with the built-in backsplash and they just added some more to the edges. Actually, this one looks pretty nice. I kind of like this one, but the choices are endless. Now, as far as your pantry or even your closets, or some of your other cabinetry. You know, these are built-ins. They've got solid wood fronts. And when I say solid, it's probably pine. It's MDF shelving, and that's okay because it's easy to finish, it's smooth. Although this isn't very smooth. But the built-ins are gonna come pretty standard, but how fancy they are, they can get real fancy, it depends on you. If you're real handy, let them put these cheap ones in, rip them out and put your own fancy ones in afterwards. Kind of the same thing with this laundry room, you know, just kind of a standard closet type setup shelf. Maybe you want cabinets specify otherwise this is kind of what you get this works it's okay it's nothing fancy nothing glamorous but it is a new home and this is what you got as you can see here this closet package looks the exact same as it did in the laundry room now when it comes to these closet packages you can get really crazy on that maybe this is all you want that's fine or you can get as fancy you can get custom hardwood built-ins that are stained and all kinds of stuff or, i mean there's companies out there that make closet packages you just give them the kind of measurements you want and what kind of style you want and they'll ship it to you and you build it yourself or they come and put it in and install it i mean you can get all kinds of crazy on this this is basically your basic closet package here but if you're getting a semi custom home 
you might want to step it up just a little bit. All right, let's talk about tiling. Endless possibilities of what kind and colors and shapes and patterns and everything. Now these here I'm sure aren't very expensive. What I want to point out is, is when you go into a house that's a brand new build that you're going to buy like this one, do this. Feel for lippage. This one's not bad. It has some, but if it doesn't, that's good. If it has a bunch, they did a crap job. Go on. But you can tell when you run your hand over it, like there's a little there, there's some here. Personally, I like to see tile all the way to the ceiling. Just a personal preference. Yes, they do it this high because water usually doesn't spray up that high, but they only put the door rock on the shower up to here anyway. The rest of that is sheetrock. So moisture in this is going to cause this to rot eventually. So why not just door rock this whole thing, not have to worry about it, and tile it to the edge and to the ceiling. Other thing, these raw edges on the soap dishes, kind of ugly. That's because they do something to make that a little prettier other than paint. And you can see they did a good job of protecting the shower pan right here, the drain open and all this crud falling down in it. But what I want to point out is, is I kind of like this shower pan. Now, yes, you can have a floated shower pan and with tile on it, make it look really nice. And that's great. If somebody can do it and have a curb that it's not going to leak, then do it. That's the hardest thing. I see tons of videos where these things are done wrong and they leak. It just, it just is aggravating. Personally, when I go redo mine, I'm going to look for one of these to put in my bathroom and then tile the walls. As it is, it's like a three-piece shower unit. This does make it look a little nicer and it is a little better upgrade than what I got. So now let's talk about windows. And windows come in many varieties and there's a whole slew of windows you can get. You can get very, very, very expensive windows to really cheap. Typically standard is going to be double pane windows. You can get triple pane. If you're going for a really energy efficient and that, you might want to do a triple pane window. So what you need to look at is the frame itself. Is it insulated or is it not? And what I mean by insulated, I mean is the fr not necessarily is the frame got spray foam in it type of insulation or even fiberglass, but it can even have air channels in it that allow for a thermal break. That way in the winter when it's really cold outside and on the inside you've got your heat on, you don't have condensation and sweat in your windows like I do in mine. Now these here are a vinyl or PVC type window. I've got aluminum windows. It's going to be a little different, but these here are not insulated. These tracks are just that. They're tracks. There's no insulation to them whatsoever. And when it comes to your dual pane and these energy ratings and stuff, I mean, you can get them filled with different kinds of gases. You can get different energy ratings. And honestly, there's such a wide variety. I don't want to go into that on this video, but you can look into that, you know, is argon better than some other gas? But I'd want to see a cutaway of the frame to see, is it got a bunch of air gaps in it that allow for thermal break for insulation? or even some of them have spray foam in them. Now you can get windows that are aluminum clad on the outside, wood on the inside. Those are kind of nice. I mean, you can get aluminum, you can get vinyl, you can get all wood, you can get all kinds. I mean, custom windows, open, don't open, casement, a whole slew of stuff. But what you want is you want an insulated frame on your window. So next, let's talk about doors, interior doors, exterior doors. We'll just lump them all together. And when it comes to doors, there's a myriad of choices. You can have a narrow door like this. You can get fatter doors. You can have hollow core. You can have solid core. You can have all wood. These are kind of a hollow core MDF, kind of a cheap thing. You can have a flat panel, raised panel, all different sizes. And doors can range anywhere from probably with the frames, anywhere from about a hundred bucks to thousands. And so it'll be personal preference. On these homes here, it's pretty much standard to have this kind of MDF type hollow core door. That's okay, it's pretty durable. I like that it's got panels. I don't particularly like the old style, just a solid sheet, but to each is their own. And when it comes to talking about your exterior doors, typically, especially your front doors, should be a solid core or an insulated door. It's not necessarily solid core, but it's an insulated door. And I'm not 100% sure, but the front, the back, I know specifically the door that goes from, say, your laundry room or wherever into your garage has to be a fire rated door. Again, like the sheetrock, it has a fire rating as to how fast it'll burn before the fire gets through it. Now, I'm not 100% sure if these front and back doors need to have that rating. If they do, it's gonna be standard in code. This one here is actually a wooden door. My front door is actually a metal skin around a wood frame that's insulated with like a styrofoam insulation in the center. And you can get them with windows, without windows. The choice is yours. You can get them with side skylights. 
you know, French doors, whatever, again, whatever your budget handles and your tastes. And the only other thing I'll briefly talk about will be your fixtures, what I mean, like your lights, your can lights, chandeliers, whatever, your wall plates and all that sort of stuff. That stuff there, I wouldn't get too carried away with. I would actually just say, put in your contractor grade fixtures and your wall plates and leave it at that. You know, make sure you got your lights where you want them and they're wired for what you want. But I would just put in a cheap old contractor grade because you can come back later as money permits and time and easily change these out to whatever you want at wall plates and change them yourself and upgrade it that way. Why pay the contractor to put a fancy one on and charge you three times the price of it to put it on? Just put a cheap one in and your money ahead. So for the fixtures, just get the cheapies. After you get moved in, go out and shop for the fancy ones you like and put them in yourself and save you a little money. Now this is where the attic access is gonna be. I like that it's out in the garage. It's big, which means they're gonna have a ladder. I don't have that. You wanna make sure it's insulated. These aren't insulated. It's not that big a deal probably out here in the garage, but if you insulate your garage and make it a shop, that's a huge source of heat and cold loss. If they've got this inside your house, you make sure this is insulated, this whole system. They can have insulated attic access ladders. So you don't have that heat and cold loss in your winter and summer months. So let's move outside and talk about your landscaping. Again, whole wide open field there of what you want to do and what's in your budget. But in these particular houses, they put in fences as you see, and they just slap them up. They're nothing fancy. They're called shared fences. So this side is yours because it's facing you and that side's the neighbor's because it's facing them. And at least they use pressure treated. It does look like they poured cement for the post which is nice probably not a very big cement but at least they put some cement in there but one thing i would definitely ask him to do and i want you to look at this see all this trash in here it isn't cleaned up but they've bladed this off at least once and they got a fence up so they're gonna have to get some sort of equipment in here to help smooth it out one more time before they lay sod because i know they do lay sod around here but they'll pick up these big pieces like this they'll pick that up but like this string, some of these water bottles, like this chunk of wood, it's liable to just get plowed over. Definitely make sure they clean this crap up before they put your grass down. The other thing, this here is just kind of filled dirt with a lot of clay. It doesn't, I mean, look at it, it's, it's rained twice. Do you see any weeds growing up in it? This stuff doesn't grow anything. So what they're gonna do is they're just gonna come in and smooth this out, contour it to where it slopes towards the fences in the back and everything like it's supposed to, so it's not sloping towards the house. And then they're just gonna plop sod on it. So the only topsoil you're gonna get is that inch of topsoil that comes with the sod. It'll grow, it'll do fine. So personally, what I would say, and now what I've seen them do on these lots, some of these is they come in and throw down and just blade over a layer of sand and then put the sod on. That's at least one improvement, but I'd want to load a topsoil on it and smooth the round and then my sod put on. Cause say you want to put a flower bed over here or over here, it's not gonna grow in that clay worth a darn. And when we're talking about sod, some of you may go, oh, I'll just grow the grass myself. That's fine. As long as you're okay with it taking months before you get a nice green grass, it looks like some actually sodded it. Personally, I don't want to wait that long. I haven't seen any grass seed that you can buy that doesn't have some weeds in it. If you don't believe me, go look at the label on any bags in the home centers, nurseries, whatever. There's going to say 0.01 or 0.1 or point something weed seed. It might even say 1% weed seed in it. And weed seed is just that weed. Your grass is going to grow up and the weeds are going to come with it. So you're going to have to pull weeds because you can't kill them because you'll kill your brand new grass that isn't grown up. And two, it takes a lot of time and it's, you know, sods down instant nice yard it costs a little more and you move into a house with a nice pretty green yard not some dirt yard that's got some pieces of grass sticking out of it here and there that's kind of growing in but it hasn't gotten there all the way and in these homes here they tend to put a tree or two in the front yard maybe some shrubs in front of the house it's really basic landscaping the other thing if you're in these southern climates or even the midwest in ground sprinkler system put it in now Way easier to do now than before you get all your stuff put in, your grass, you gotta tear it all up. Cost more, yes, save you a lot of time and headaches. Like these homes here that are pre-built brand new, they're just slapping whatever cheap landscaping that looks kind of pretty in and on they go. And one other thing when it comes to your landscaping, now they're not even close to it on this one, but for your driveway, they don't pack this. They'll just blade over it, make sure it's smooth. They'll come in, lay the concrete, done. First four years, it won't matter. But like this year, we've had a very hot and dry summer and that ground dries up 
and it starts to sink and buckle because it did it very bad in my driveway this year. In fact, to the point I'm probably going to have to have it replaced next year. Compact this dirt before they put your driveway on there. That way you can avoid that expensive replace down the road. Now what I really like is if any of you have bought a pre-built brand new home like these are or gone through and had a semi-custom or even a custom home built, I'd like to know what your experiences have been. The good and the bad. Not just all bad, but I'd sure like to know what experiences you had. Did you find all this crappy stuff I found in these episodes that they were trying to do in your house? Or did you have a fairy tale experience and it all went smooth and great and no issues? I would really love to know and put it down in the comments. And as I said at the first of this video, if you didn't see the first four episodes and you wanna go back and see them, there's a playlist right here you can click on and you can go see all four episodes. So with that, I hope your new home building experience is much better because of these videos. So until next time, happy DIY.